Hi everyone and welcome to my sewing room. Today, well hang on just a minute, that's a little noisier than I wanted it to be. Um, today we're going to play around with PE Design software, so don't go away. So I'm back as you can see I'm really bundled up today. It is absolutely freezing in Colorado right now I don't think I've ever been this cold before um, But it's nice to be snugly warm in the house with a warm sweater on and doing embroidery And what I thought we would do is use the canvas workspace Some of the designs that are in there bring them into the PE design software and then create an embroidery design with that and while I was at it, maybe do a standalone lace. I know I've done that a little bit in the past, but why not do it again? It'll be fun and it'll be a nice project and you might learn something about your PE design software. So let's go to the computer and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do today is I want to go to my can my brother Canvas Workspace. And I actually have that on my desktops. You can, when you go to the Canvas Workspace online, you can download a desktop version. So I'm going to click on that and open it up. And I've already signed into this, so hopefully it will open up and still be... Um, signed into me anyway this is just has to do with the art spirit app i'm going to just say okay and close that so the first thing that opens up is the pattern collection so and and these are all really these are free designs if you scroll down it will keep refreshing itself and you'll see lots and lots of fun designs here that you can bring in and you don't have to have a scanning cut to do things with this if you have PE design software. So I am going to go back up here to the top and I thought this butterfly was really pretty. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and put it on my Canvas workspace. I'm gonna X out of this. There it is on my workspace. Now I'm gonna save it. And when I go to file, I could put save as, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to export transfer this as an F cm file so i'm going to click that and it's going to say do you want to um, export the file do you want to transfer it to your scanning cut um i want to just export the file and then it's asking me where do you want to put it and i have a file in my computer that i call i have to find it let's see documents scanning cut class and um, I'm going to name this Butterfly 2 and hit save. So now I can X out of my Canvas workspace. Don't save. I'm good to go. Now I'm going to open my PE design software, which is already open. So now in order to bring that SCM file in, I need to go to my Scan and Cut tab. So I'm going to hit scan and cut and import. And there's the file right there, the butterfly one. And I'm going to import that. And then close it. So there is just an outline, but it has already added stitches to it. So I could probably sew that out as a red work right now if I wanted to do that. So that's kind of fun that I can do that. But I can also do a few other things with it. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go home. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in. So this is a really fun red work or um, a cut file, but it's too much for an embroidery. There's way too much going on here. So I'm going to hit the select button. I'm going to select it and it's got the dotted blue line around it, which means it is grouped. So I'm going to right click on it. Whoops. Let's see. Let's select it. Right click ungroup. And the dotted blue line goes around, which means each one of these things can be selected separately. I'm going to select this little dot and hit my delete on my keyboard. You can also select it and right click and delete that way. So I'm going to get rid of just a couple of these things. I'm going to delete this one. Let's delete this one. 
And then I also think I want to get rid of, well, one of the ones I definitely want to get rid of is this one because I have played around with this and I know that it doesn't make a good embroidery. There's way too much stuff going on right there. So I'm going to delete that. And I think I also want to, I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. I think I want to get rid of this one. And this one. And maybe, I just don't want too many of these things in here. Delete. No, let's undo that one. I like that big one there. But I think this little guy right here can be deleted. Delete. And this one right here. Okay, so now I got rid of some of this stuff that was cluttering up my workspace here. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to, some of these are going to sew in solid and some of them are going to leave a hole. So I want to leave some little holes here. So in order to do that, what I have to do is I have to click on the dot and you have to get right on the thread. If you try and click close it, it's not going to do it. So I'm going to click on that dot. I'm going to click on, hold your control button down and click on another one. That selects two of them. Hold your control button down and click on the fourth one. Hold your control button down. And I should have all four of those, I hope. And then I'm going to hold my control button down and select the whole butterfly. So that should select all of them. And you'll notice up here across the top, there's a thing that says modify overlap and set hole sewing. Modify overlap, set hole sewing. And hopefully that worked. And the only way I can really know is to select the butterfly. And up here, my shape shapes menu just opened. I'm going to open that. And I'm going to say to fill this with a net filling stitch and when it turns on this one this one this one and this one worked those two didn't so i'm going to do it again i'm going to just come in here zoom in really close select that one hold the control button down select the butterfly and set hole sewing Aha, that worked. Now let's go over here. Let's do it again. We're going to hit here. And we're going to hold the control button down, select here, and modify overlap, set hole sewing. Aha, that one did that too. So let's go back out. So now I got some holes in there, and I could do a lot of holes if I wanted to. It's completely up to you what you want to do. Now, one of the things when I make a lace, usually this net, fill is not um, enough to make something that's a complete lace design that stands by itself. So I like to duplicate it. The problem is if I duplicate just the butterfly, it's going to fill my holes back in again. So I literally have to select that circle, hold the control button down and select that circle. Hold that one. Control. Okay, this may not be easy. Let's do it this way. I'm going to get close enough that I can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm going to select this one. I could do it by opening this and finding each one of the dots 
Let's see if that works. So I'm going to select this one. Hold the control button down, select this one. Hold the control button down, select this one. Okay, I think I got all of them. I'm going to right click and say select objects. Then while all that is selected, I'm going to right click and copy. Click over here, just any old place, right click and paste. That worked. Oh my gosh, that worked. So I've duplicated that. There's two of them on there. You can see over here, there's one here and one here. So that means I duplicated the fill. Come over here to where it says sewing attributes. And if you're not in your sewing attributes, if you're over here, import or color somewhere, just hit sewing attributes um, while that is selected and change the direction of that net fill. So it's going a different direction so they one goes up and down and one goes sideways so i have one that's 173 degrees and i have one that's 45 degrees so that's two of them that should make quite a strong lace design and it has the holes in it so that worked i like that okay now what am i going to do next i want to select all of these here um, everything that's right there. So I've, I clicked on it here. I'm going to say select objects and I'm going to change those all to a zigzag stitch. Voila, that worked. So now this one is going to take me a little bit longer. I want to fill some of these in with a, with a um, fill stitch. Not all of them, just some of them. Oh, before I start doing that, I want to just select just this outside one. So I just have the butterfly selected and I want to change the zigzag width to be thicker just for that one outside one. Give it a second there that so just that one is thicker than the rest of them because it's going to be a standalone lace design and I want it to have a little bit of a strength around the outside of it. So that worked okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to hit the zoom button. I'm going to come in close here. Now you'll notice, see the way the top of my zigzag stitch has got a running stitch going down the middle of it. That's because of that last um, outline stitch that's in there. So if I hit the plus sign right here and open that up, I can select just this one right click select object and tell this one to not sew it's just that one outline i don't want it to sew i still have one there um let's see Oh, I know what's going on. Okay. It's because the the last net fill is on top of the first one. So all I have to do is select it here and move it up here. So there it is. That's good. Okay. So um, All of these little circle ones, this one, all the way down to this one, hold your shift key down to select them all and just tell the machine to sew those first. So now they're at the very beginning instead of on top of my satin stitching. So that worked good. So now let's just for the fun of it, let's select this heart and in the shape shapes menu, let's do a fill and let's leave it pink. Pink is fine. 
I haven't decided what the rest of this is going to be. It's probably going to be pink too. Um, let's see. Let's select this one, go up here and make it a fill stitch. And this one. And if I come over here and put my mouse over the top of this one and hit hold my control button down, I should be able to select more than one at a time. So I'm going to select that one. that one and that one. I think I have four of them there. So let's just do a fill stitch on all four of those and let's make them turquoise. Oh, that worked. That's good. Okay. I want to make this heart a fill stitch and it's still pink. And then I want to do these ones, this one, come over to this one, hold the control button down. You always hold the control button down when you're trying to select more than one item at a time. So control, then come over here, control, and I'm going to change these to a fill stitch. And I'm going to make them. I know if I come over here to my colors, I've already used this blue. So I'm going to hit it over here. So at least, whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Undo. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that I'm in the region. So. shapes. This color is the color I want to change. There, that's better. So that changed that color. And then let's do the flowers the same way. So we're going to select each one of these is going to be different. So I have to select each one and I can do it here too. See if I go down all the way down here, and I open these up, I can tell which ones are the flowers. They're these right here. So this one, hold my shift key down, select objects, change the color to a fill, and make that purple. Ha. And then do the same thing again down here. Let's see, where's the rest of my flowers? Oh, they're right here. Let's open them up. So this one down shift key to this one right click select objects go up here fill stitch color purple there so now let's go back home and let's zoom out and now I've created a butterfly and I like the way it looks. I think it's really pretty and it should be a standalone lace butterfly. The other thing I want to do is you'll notice here in my sewing um, order that I've got pink and then satin stitch and then pink and then satin stitch and then blue and then satin. Uh, that's not going to work for me. So I'm going to select everything like that. And then I'm going to hit optimize sewing order. And now hopefully I have satin stitch and then pink and then satin stitch and then solid pink. And then, so it's, it optimized it, but not the way I really want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and move it up here.
and then I'm going to move these blue ones together. And I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to say, so that last. And then I'm going to, I got purple next. I have all these little dots next and then I've got purple. That worked out pretty good. I don't know why these won't collapse. There they go. Now they collapsed. So the only thing I need to move is this little circle thing, which I want it to be before the satin stitch, but after all of those. So that colors all together. There we go. So I got first the pink netting, then the blue, then the purple, and then the outline stitches. And if I want to make this outline stitch something that's more appealing to me, I can select it select objects it'll be right here after it thinks about it for a minute and i could tell it to do that all in what color would we do the whole thing in let's do black Ugh, i honestly don't like that at all um let's do it in white let's see what happens when it when it turns white I don't know. I'll have to think about that until I get ready to embroider it out. Maybe I'll I'll do it in pink. I don't know. But anyway, so you got a good idea about how to do that. It takes a little bit of work, but it's really fun. And it's, it's a good way to get started um, trying to figure out a new project. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, and you'll notice, and I just realized this myself, that I have my largest hoop on here. So if I go into here and I do my design properties, Sorry about that. Cancel. Go to my design settings. I have the nine and a half by 14 hoop on here. So that is a really big butterfly that I have just created. Um, so I might want to select the whole thing. And since I created this in the software, I do not have to hold the control button down to change my size. I can just do it like that. It's going to think about it for a minute. So now my butterfly, if I look down in here, is six by five, six by five. That's pretty good. That should, let's see, fit in. What if I go to seven? Let's see. my five by seven hoop. Okay. Uh oh, I think I so did is that that's not gonna fit in a five by seven hoop. So, but I still want to leave it that size. So design settings. I have um let's do an eight by eight hoop. That works. Okay. I don't know how long this is going to take to sew it out. If I go up here to design properties, it says it's going to take me 64 minutes to sew this out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to sew it out and see what I end up with. Remember to put it on wash away stabilizer and we'll see what happens. Um, save as and get ready to sew this out. Okay, so I finished up the embroidery design and here it is. I'm going to show it to you on this and then I'll show you a little bit. Whoops. 
I'll show it to you on this and then I'll show it to you with a, a little bit better picture in the corner of the screen. Um, it's still wet. That's the reason why it, I can't hold it up very well. Um, but it will be stiff when it gets uh, a little drier. But um, it is completely standalone lace. I think it came out really, really nice. You can literally see through it. Um, the only thing I think I would really change is remember when I was in the software, I widened the last zigzag that went around the outside of it. I probably wouldn't do that again just because once it sewed it out, it moved beyond the foundation grid that I had set down for the lace. So the satin stitching around the outside is not as pretty as I would have liked it to be. And if I had left it thin, it would have gone right over the edge and it would have been a lot better. But I think once it dries, it will... Um, look the way I want it to look and it'll be a pretty lace um, design and it, I'm hoping that you got a little bit about what you can do with PE design software changing things starting out with an outline from um, a cut file and making it into something so hopefully that would m make it into a, a video that was worth watching um, I also wanted to mention to you that um, during the month of February at uh, so basically, yeah, j j just during the month of February, I'm going to be doing a doll class in here in Colorado, in the Aurora store and in the Arvada store. We're going to make a little witch doll. She's really cute. I'll put a picture of her up in the corner. It's one that I designed myself, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do a video on how to sculpt the face and how to wrap the uh, the legs and that sort of thing. And I know that most people who watch this channel want to learn about their sewing machine. Um, so maybe that might be boring for some of you, but I just thought it would be a really fun video to do. And then I can kind of cross-reference it in my class. I hope that that doesn't, um, isn't a problem for anybody, but um, that's what I'm going to probably do in the next couple of videos that I put up. So check it out. You might actually have some fun watching me make it all. Um, and in the meantime, I hope you have a great January and February. Don't get too cold, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.